So one of the things we all have to deal with that is extremely frustrating in mycology, mushroom cultivation, is contamination. Now, one of the worst things that could possibly happen is you spend a ton of time and energy making some really nice master LCs. You test them out, they work great, they look beautiful, just like this one right here. You use it a couple times, and then on the third or fourth time you go to use it, everything's contaminated, the entire LC contaminated. And you're sitting there wondering what the hell happened. So we're gonna talk about how you could protect your LCs from ever contaminating so you don't run into this issue. It's so simple, so easy, yet a lot of people don't use it. And I think it's gonna be a game changer for a lot of you guys that work from LC that wanna make sure it stays clean the entire time you have it in rotation. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. This is the first video of the new year. Last year was great. This year is going to be better. I'm Willie Michael. This is Willie's World. That's all my social media right there. If you want my private library, step-by-step -step cultivation, extractions, whatever, all the good stuff, go check out Patreon because that's where everything's at. My Instagram, the official Instagram is right there. There's a lot of fake accounts out there pretending to be me. If it doesn't say this right here, that's not me. So you might be talking to somebody else. Just remember, I would never ask you to buy something or, you know, do something sketchy or something like that. So if somebody is pretending to be me and asking you to do that or talking about stuff like that, it's definitely not me. So just keep that in mind. If this video helped you out, just take a second, go down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell off to the side. So that way you guys know when I drop a new video. I drop new videos every single week. The unfortunate part is not every single video could be uploaded to YouTube. It just is what it is. YouTube has community guidelines and regulations. They're very strict about that. We have a great partnership with YouTube. We wanna keep it going. So we have to follow the rules and regulations that they put in place. It just is what it is. So for all that stuff, you could just go over to Patreon because that's where it's all at in our private library and it's absolutely amazing. So with that said, let's jump right into this video. What are we gonna be talking about today? We are gonna be talking about preserving the integrity of your liquid cultures or your bulk spore jars. So traditionally, we would make a jar with LC, it would have a self healing injection port, some type of gas exchange. Whenever we needed to use it, we'd take a syringe, we'd stick it through the self healing injection port, we'd suck some up, and it's ready to be used. Now, some people like to open theirs up and pour it into their bag. Some people use an inoculation loop, all those different things. But regardless, the same thing applies to every single one of those. Now, how does a perfectly good LC go bad after only once, twice, or three times of using it? How does that happen? Well, it's really, really simple. The more times you expose it, the more times you compromise it, the higher the chance of contamination. So every time you're taking a liquid culture syringe needle or just a regular syringe needle in and out of that self healing injection port, you are hurting its integrity, its effectiveness. Every single time you go in and out, it becomes less effective. There's only a certain amount of life to each one of those self healing injection ports. It doesn't matter if you're using you know, some of the hard plastic ones or the micropose ones or RTV, it really does not matter. Every time you're cracking open that jar to pour it in your grains, the chance of contamination is there. And the more times you do it, the higher the chance. So how do we protect our LCs? How do we stop exposing them to that chance of contamination every single time we need to use them? It's super, super easy. One word, stop cock. I know that sounds funny, but that's what it's called. It's called the stopcock. It's a valve that you could open and close and we're only gonna have to put a liquid culture syringe needle in there one time. So how does it work? So once you put your liquid culture syringe needle in there in sterile conditions, following sterile technique, doing it the proper way, you then affix a stopcock with a one-way valve to the needle and then every single time you wanna go suck up some of that LC or those spores or that slurry, whatever you have, you just open up the valve, 
suck it up into your syringe, close the valve, pull your syringe off. We're now not putting a needle through that self-healing injection port every single time we wanna take some. We're not having to crack it open. As you guys know, a master LC could last years. It could last a very long time before you need to make new LCs or do a transfer or anything like that. So preserving the integrity is key to making it last all that time. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about what you're gonna need to keep your LCs safe. The first thing you're gonna need is your liquid cultures. Now you're gonna make your liquid cultures the same exact way you would always make your liquid cultures. There's many different ways to skin a cat, so they say. You know, there's many different techs out there. I have a bunch of techs. In fact, I have one right here on the channel. If you guys wanna go check it out, I show you how to make liquid cultures with extra light malt extract, which is my preferred way of making LCs. Now, once you guys have your LCs, you know they're clean, you know they're not contaminated, you're gonna keep them in rotation for a while. The next thing you need is some liquid culture needles. Now, liquid culture needles could vary in size. Typically, I like to use 14 gauge. That's my preferred gauge on the needle. That seems to be just right. You know, it's not too big, it's not too narrow. And I like to use anywhere from three to four inches of length. Now you'll see different lengths, you'll see different gauges. Choose what's best for you, but I suggest using something between a 16 gauge and a 14 gauge. Don't go no lower, don't go no higher. Now the way gauges work is the higher you go, the more fine the needle. The lower you go, the more blunt the needle will get, the bigger it will get. Now remember, most liquid culture needles are not sterile, so you're gonna have to sterilize them before you could actually use them. But that's really not a problem because we typically do that even with our sterile needles, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that to make sure it's clean before you guys actually insert it into your LC. The next thing you guys are gonna need is some isopropyl alcohol. Now when you guys go looking for isopropyl alcohol, you guys are gonna see many different types of isopropyl. You're gonna see 50-50 blends, you're gonna see 50%, 70%, 80, 90, 91. You're gonna see all these different numbers and you might be wondering, well, what's the best isopropyl to use? I suggest using something between 70% and 80%. It's much more effective. In general, you wanna use a lower percentage, like 70, 75 because it has a slower evaporation time and it can penetrate the endospores much more efficiently. See, with 90 and above, it evaporates so fast that sometimes it might not do an efficient job. So you wanna use something that's a little bit lower that has a slightly slower evaporation time because it will make sure that it's doing a better job as it evaporates. Now for the liquid culture needles, I'm gonna be using the 91% isopropyl. But for the jars, for the self hail injection port, for the lids, I'm gonna be using some alcohol wipes. It's 70% and I'm using those because I wanna make sure those self hail injection ports at the top of my jars are completely disinfected before I start doing any work. Now the next thing you guys are gonna need is your stopcocks. These are one-way stopcocks. I know that sounds like a funny name, but that's their actual name. Now these are lure lock male one-way stopcocks. Now once you guys have your one-way lure lock male stopcocks, you guys are pretty much all set. Now as always, we're always gonna be working inside of a still air box if you don't have a flow hood. If you have a flow hood, follow sterile technique. So you guys wanna make sure you're using gloves, you're using hand sanitizer, you're flame sterilizing, you're disinfecting your surfaces that your flow hood is operating at the correct capacity, and then you guys are good to go. Now, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your liquid cultures are clean. You don't wanna be doing this on liquid cultures that could potentially be contaminated. So what I suggest doing is testing out all your liquid cultures on agar first to make sure that they're actually clean. Once you guys know for sure that your liquid culture is clean, you guys are ready to move forward. So you wanna bring your LCs to your workstation wherever you're gonna be working, whether like I said, that's in a still airbox or a flow hood, whatever the case may be. You wanna make sure everything's disinfected. You wanna put on some gloves. You wanna wipe your gloves down with some hand sanitizer and you guys are ready to go. The first thing I like to do is open up my liquid culture needles and I like to fill up the jar that they came in with my isopropyl alcohol. So like I said, I'm gonna be using 91% for the needles I'm just gonna pour it in there until it gets right to the top. I don't wanna cover over the lore lock part, I just wanna cover over the needle, that's it. 
So I want them sitting inside this isopropyl. Once the isopropyl is in there, I'm just gonna put the lid back on and we're gonna move on to the next thing. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna take my stopcock and I just wanna wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol. I just wanna wipe it down and I wanna make sure that it evaporates before we actually use it. Now, like I said with the LC needles, they're not sterile and neither are these stopcocks. So you wanna just wipe them down really good with some isopropyl and give it a chance to evaporate. Now, once you guys do that, we wanna to start to prep our LCs. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some isopropyl alcohol and you wanna wipe down the self healing injection port and you also wanna wipe down around the lid and on top of the lid. You wanna make sure you get that entire area. You never know where there's gonna be some dust or some spores or anything like that anywhere on this lid. So the better you wipe it down, the cleaner you'll be. Once you guys have that all wiped down, now we're gonna prep our LC needle. So what you wanna do is take one of your needles out of the alcohol jar that you just made and you wanna shake it and just try to get off all the excess alcohol. Once you guys have all the excess alcohol off, now you wanna flame sterilize the needle. Work your way up and down, up and down. You guys want all that alcohol to evaporate, but you also wanna flame sterilize the entire needle. Now just make sure when you're flame sterilizing, you don't go too close to the top because if it gets really hot up there, those plastics will start to melt and it will ruin the needle. So you guys just wanna work your way up, leaving about a quarter inch from the top. Once you guys get a nice glowing tip, it's all set. Now what we could do is we could poke it through our LC. Now don't freak out because the needle's hot, it's perfectly fine. Once it hits the liquid culture, it will cool immediately. It's much better to insert it when it's still hot than wait for it to cool down and then insert it. Because what could happen is more dust particles and things like that could fall on it and might make their way into the LC. So insert it while it's still hot. Once you guys have the LC needle inside your LC, now you guys wanna attach the stopcock. So attach the end that attaches to the needle. Once you guys have it on there nice and tight, make sure that your valve is closed. You do not want the valve open, make sure it's closed. Now, once you guys have that on there, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna parafilm around the lid of our LC. This is just gonna protect anything that could possibly get in there or anything like that. So what you wanna do is you just wanna take a strip of parafilm and you wanna go around the lid the same exact way you would an agar dish. Same exact thing. Once you guys have that on there, it's pretty much done. You guys are ready to use it. So how you would use it is right here before you attach a syringe or anything like that, shake it up, get all that mycelium broken up and floating around. And then once it's all broken up and floating around, you guys could take a brand new syringe, attach it to the top of your stopcock and suck up some of that LC. Make sure you open up the valve before you do it or nothing will happen. So once you open up the valve, just suck it up, close the valve, take off your syringe and it's ready to use. Now, typically what I'll do is I'll take another syringe and I'll just attach it to the top and just leave it there. That way nothing can get inside that stopcock, you know, no dust or anything like that. Now, if you guys wanted to take some parafilm or you guys wanted to do something else to cover up that stopcock, you guys could do that. But I usually just put a syringe on there. Then when I need to go pull some more of that LC, there's already a syringe there and it's also protecting it at the same time. So in the end, this is exactly how it should look, just like this. Got our LC syringe in there. As you can see, the stopcock is right there. And then my syringe is on here. As you guys can see, we also got the parafilm going all the way around the lid, and that's gonna help with some extra protection. This is a simple and easy way to protect your LCs or your bulk spore solution. Very, very easy, very effective. Like I said, you're not sticking a needle in and out of there every single time. You're just putting it through one time, and then what you could do is just open and close that valve as you need it. So it's not wearing out that self healing injection port. So you're gonna get a lot more use out of that self healing injection port in the long run. As you guys know, master liquid cultures, we could keep in rotation for years, you know, before we have to switch them out or do something with them or make a transfer or something like that. So this is a great way to preserve the integrity of your liquid cultures. A lot of people were asking about this. 
Like I said, when you go and you make a good LC and everything's perfect, you've been working on the genetics, you know it's clean, you use it a couple times, it's fantastic, and then all of a sudden, third, fourth time, it's completely contaminated. And that's because you're sticking a needle in and out, in and out, in and out, and every single time you do that, there's a chance of contaminating that LC. So this reduces the chances of that happening greatly. Worst case scenario, you might get a contaminated syringe, but you're not gonna contaminate the entire solution if you do things in the right steps. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. A lot of you guys were asking the question on how to preserve the integrity. How do you stop your self-healing injection ports from going bad if you keep an LC for many years, you know, one, two, three years, however long you keep them. And this is how you do it. Now there's a couple other different ways to do it, but this is the way I've been doing it and I wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully you could take this, run with it, implement it in what you're doing and it's gonna make your life a lot easier. With that said, hopefully this was extremely helpful for you guys and I just wanna thank you guys for all your love and support. I hope this is the best year we've had so far. You know, everything's great year after year after year and it just keeps getting better and better. So I can't wait to see what type of things we tackle this year. We got the web series that's gonna pick up and continue this year. We got something really special coming. I don't wanna talk about it right now, but something very, very special is coming for you guys. Tons of videos that we have recorded already and planned out. So I'm super excited. I wanna thank you guys for all your love and support. Till the next one, I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.